Hi, it's Lil from Made by Marley and I've done another couple of these videos but this is um, two videos put together. I was very fortunate that IOD um, sent me um, some of uh, the new Q2 release and um, I was allowed to play about with them and some produce some work. So I filmed these videos for IOD but on our channel I've put in the, the ones that make sense together. So I've done a previous video with two of the new stamps which is Serpentina and Bella and this is a video which I'm going to be using uh, two of the new inlays, one which is called Le Chasse and the other one which is called Petite Parasols and follow along and see what I managed to create with um, these beautiful new inlays. Hi, it's Lyle from Made by Marley and today I'm going to be showing you the very, very, very new, probably, I've said this in all my videos, probably the only person in the UK to have it, which is, makes me feel really good. Um, Le Chasse is a paint inlay and it comes with one big picture which I'm actually, you put together in four, which I'm actually going to apply right now onto... It's an old letter cupboard that I've already painted over in the studio, but I'm doing it outside because I just wanted better light to align it and everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to the studio. Once it's dry, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to paint it from the reverse. That's the theory. Anyway, so I'm going to get on and show you me just applying this. I'm going to apply it with a brush and it's Mod Podge that I'm applying with, dish, dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And um, I'm applying it onto the glass. Now this cupboard needed a little bit of repair it's got a little bit of a repair up here but martin's fixed it all it's completely solid again and we're hoping that by the time this all goes on you're not going to see this and then i'm going to paint the edges so we need i need a paintbrush that might help and i've got a little pot here to put my my mod podge in oh that came out much faster than i had anticipated okay so I'm going to start with this one here because this is going to keep me right. So I'm just going to move these up a little bit and move this one up a little bit too so that I can apply. Now it's the same deal as you would apply with paint. So not too much big thick clumps because they'll make sort of grooves in your inlays. So I'm just applying that nice, maybe a little bit thicker. And I think I've got the right sort of height. So sit that down there. And it's this little beauty first. <laughs> I wondered what Martin was doing there. He was actually going to help me. So I think this is going to stick really fast, so it's a kind of one time only deal here, getting this down. Now, I have actually forgotten a cloth, so bear with me, one minute. Wet cloth, and I'm just going to smooth out as many of these wrinkles as I can on this, only because I want it to be as smooth as I can. Hmm, I really like that wrinkle. Now, I'm not going to overwork it because you'll rip it. I think that's good enough. I'm going to apply the other side now. And again, same process. Not too thick, not too thin. And I, I always find when I'm doing the inlays that nice smooth brush. Um. I'm just using a cheap chip brush, but it's a nice smooth one, this one. I use it for a few different things. So I like that, not too many grooves or thick areas now. I have to go right, right to this edge. And I can see a little part here that I haven't pushed down. 
there. Now, this is where it's gonna get, gonna get real. Hoo -hoo. So I want to, I think I'm pretty good there. I don't want to move it around now it's on. Martin will tell me whether I've I've done it right or not. Yeah, that's good. Does that look okay, Martin? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now as I said I'm gonna paint round the edges just to get rid of this blank bit when they come off. We don't want that sort of How's that man? Is that looking good? Or th thumbs up from the other side of the camera there. Now, this top half. So I'm just going to kind of come round here. Again, making sure that I've got it right up to that edge. And then smooth out your strokes. Like, like that. Now this one, this one here, I need to make sure that it lines up with this swirl here. So I'm going here and I'm laying down here and I'm letting it fall. How's that, Martin? <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> keep, keep wetting your cloth. Um, you don't want a dry cloth. I mean, you could clear up that there, but it's going to be under paint. So, so wet it first and then smooth. That's what I've kind of found. A big wrinkle there. I'm kind of. Now, this other side. Okay. Get this on and then we'll cover this boo-boo where the glass broke. It's all been completely repaired and you won't, you're not gonna be able to know it's there at the end of it all, so. And it really, the cabinet it's going in is really, really cute, so. Waste not want not. Now, normally when everything's gone so well like this so far, this will be the one that goes on and it's a nightmare. I have to go back and sort of dampen the sage. Right, so on this one, I'm lining up this edge here. isn't what I wanted. It's miles away from this edge here. Close enough. Hang on, let's see if I can just adjust it. I don't want to move it around in case it's 
there's a little bit of a gap there. We'll just have to live with it. I told you, I obviously did it to myself by saying this will be the one that doesn't go on right. Mm, a little bit, a little bit annoyed about that. Something I just don't want to rip it. We'll see what we can do when it all comes comes out. Maybe I could put a little bit of stamp on there, you know. We'll see how we go. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to leave this to dry and I'm going to go into the studio and I'm going to show you the cupboard and what we're going to do with it. So we're back in the studio and this is the piece that the door has came off. It's an old letter cupboard. I've left the sides brown and the letter piece brown and when the glass goes on um, we can paint the reverse or, or at least that's a plan. So the next thing, I have a little vintage school desk, a little cute little vintage school desk. It's a little bit rough and ready, but there are single, four of them, I don't know why I did two fingers, four of these in the Le Chasse, um inlays. So what I'm going to do is this little cute one with the little girly on the swing. And it's all happening there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this onto the middle of here. And then I think what I might do is possibly doing some stamping around it. I don't know. So what I need to do is I need to paint it. So I just need to get my paintbrush, which is here, and my paint. I shouldn't really lean that up on that. And it's a bit rickety, I'll stand on it. Um, I'm just going to give it one good, I thought there was a brush in, coat of paint. My paint's getting quite thick. I can tidy it up once I've, once I've got it, once it's all on my inlay. I think I've gone thicker than it actually is. I don't think it's as wide as that, but I want it to not miss any parts. So, painted, voila, and I'm just going to, I want it kind of central. I'm terrible at trying to make things central. Martin, is that about right? <laughs> Can you see Martin's ha hand in the frame? Sorting out my, oh, it's not... It's not straight, Martin. <gasps> Never mind. It's going on wonky. I will fix this part and I'll show you how. The fact that I have to keep showing you fixes, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I just need to get past to get my water and my cloth. and smooth out your wrinkles. I'm sorry it's slightly wonky, but I'll definitely be doing stamping now. <laughs> mm. Never mind. So I'm just going to let that dry. So we've peeled off the inlays from this side and we've reversed it so that the image is the other way around. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and paint this. Now we will have to seal it once I've painted it, but I'm going to give it a go and see how it looks just from the opposite side. There's a bit of a residue where the Mod Podge is and Martin kind of roughly went round. I think he would have spent all night doing it, but I got to the point where I was like, hmm. The crack is still there, unfortunately, because I decided to keep this here all with nothing in it because we really want to show that, you know, it's been glass in the first place. 
But when, when I show it to you and, you t and I turn it around, you'll think that that looks cool. It looks really vintage and it looks like it's had a repair, which we quite liked. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible. Um, I'm just doing it roughly um, and I'm going to do a, a kind of watercolour-y effect. But before I do that, I want to add some gold to the back where these, this sort of flourishes. So I'm just gonna go around it now to the, from this side, it doesn't look like I'm doing that spectacular a job, but when you turn it around, you should be able to see that I've painted it in gold. So I, as I said, you just roughly round it because this is the inside. It's just to kind of show up the color and give it a little bit of color behind it. So all I'm doing is this. Just kind of painting it on like this in a sort of watercolour effect, you know, as thick and thin. Around this flourish, around this one. So you get the sort of the, the gist of what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm going to paint that all in gold and that there. So some of the bits where Martin's kind of really scraped it away, it'll look quite good because it'll be quite solidly gold. Um, around here, a wee bit of a flourish there. I'm just making sure I kind of get all the sort of swoopy bits. I don't think that's their term, but that's what I'm calling them. And I've got kind of quite a few artist brushes here, um, which I'm going to just fill in here and there, colour here and there. I'm not, I, I'm, you know, you can spend all day painting this in. I'm, I'm, I don't intend to do that. I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of colour from the reverse. Some swoopy bits here. And I think I'm kind of like, some here, kind of golden with a, with a golden. Um, oh, Martin's pointing out some, some swoopy bits here. And it doesn't matter if it's going to go onto your glass like that, that's fine. Some of the slides. I mean, they don't all need to be done. Right, so that's all I'm doing with the gold. That's, that's it. There's no, no more complicated than what I've just done. We're keeping this simple. I'll do my crack. I'll do my where it's broken there we go now next color and this is chalk paint now and i'm gonna try and do i want to find a color for this and i'm thinking i haven't put any out but i'm thinking um some of this blue but i'm really gonna really water it down I think I've picked too big a brush for this, but we'll see. So nice and watery like this, watercolour effect. So chalk paint with plenty of water. That might even be too thick. Nope, oh, that's perfect. So I'm going round here like this. Avoiding those flowers and leaves. We'll paint those in a minute. So just like this. Your brush slip, slips really nice on the glass. So, you know, I mean, as I said, it's just... Just to kind of like to give it a sort of look like it's been watercolour painted. Um, you're just kind of dot in between there. We're going to go there and there. And down here we'll go along here. Down our flourish. Whoop. I think I'm going to come back around there with the gold maybe. There we go. So I'm sure you don't want to see me doing this whole thing. So I'm just going to go and um, once I've done a little bit more, I'll come back and, and I'll show you what I've done. Okay. Okay, so I've... Um, Put the paint on the back. Uh, it's just a suggestion. It's just to give it a little bit of colour from behind. It's I mean it's not Picasso. 
uh, once this is dry, the next time you see it, I'm going to just get mine to fit it onto the cabinet. And um, the cabinet's already been sealed, so when the door goes on, it it's pretty much done, and we'll move on to this other inlay that we uh, popped onto the little old school desk. Okay, so the door is on and it's looking great, but the only thing is, I think I'd like this to pop these details to pop a little bit more. So I'm going to go open it up inside and I'm going to um, I'm going to paint just just where this is inside over the top of this white just so this all pops. I'm not going to paint in all the clear bits because I still want to be able to see inside it. So and I've tidied up obviously the door that was all messy when I was painting the inside. So it's all it's nearly it's nearly done. I just need to put a little bit of gold on there and so I'm going to do that and then we'll get to that little desk. Okay, it's been <laughs> I really like it. It's came out really well. What I've done is put the white paint on the back. It's sort of given that sort of bluey tinge, which I really love. Um, what I need to do next is I need to lacquer around all these shapes on the front. I need to lacquer the paint on the back just to protect it. The main carcass will be waxed. But what I'm currently doing is I'm just going around with a little artist brush and I'm just aging in aging in around the, the edges and if I move my legs you can see this is where I've done down here so I'm just giving it a little bit of age just putting it on and giving it a little wipe with a cloth and that's what I'm going to do now I'm just going to age it and let's get on with the little desk okay we finally got to the little table I can I just say I've got more and more painty as the day goes on but we're, we're forging on so what I'm going to do is I've wet the inlay and I am just going to peel it off like that and it still looks squint so <laughs> it, it hasn't stopped looking squint in this period of time oh, yeah so <laughs> I'm, I'm blaming Martin for my squintness of my transfer what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to let it dry for a bit just a bit and I'm actually going to spray seal it and then I'm going to apply of which I have loads of some lavender all the way around it to try and to try and take the eye away from this little boo-boo yeah so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to let it dry for a minute spray seal it which I'm going to have to do outside and then bring it back in and we'll get this on it well, I've cut out some lavender from the painterly florals transfer, which I'm going to apply around about it. Martin has just said, do these really go with this? And I said, yes, they do. So they're going on here. So I'm just going to put them on. More is more, right? More. Yeah, more, more is more. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to apply them. Maybe they don't go, but let's have a look and see if we can make it work. Um... I don't want them side by side. Let's start applying them and we'll see how it goes. I'm, I mean, fortune favours the bold. I don't want them all so long though, so I have to cut that one out of there now. So let's try with some short ones first. So if you've never applied an, an ILD transfer, you just put it onto your piece and use the little handy dandy transfer stick to to scrape it on. It goes kind of opaque when you've got it all on, like like so. And let's get rid of that one. I'll cut another one. So how I'm doing it is I'm kind of cutting here. So I'm kind of going to make this this work here like this. I kind of want them going in different directions and in different heights. Oop, half of that was missing. Um, so I'm just going to go on because this is a little bit dull and cut out my lavender which Martin thinks doesn't go and um, I'll come back to you once it's done. So it's finished. So this beautiful piece of work has been created with the four panel inlays from the Le Chasse um, inlays. And you saw what I did. I put them on with 
dishwasher, Mod Podge, let it dry, peeled them off, painted it from behind, then put some white, uh, shabby sheet the cupboard. It's an old letter cupboard. Um, and now it just looks, it looks so French. Um, simple staging and it's done. And even the crack, I think, just makes it. Um, it's really nice. Uh, it's a lovely piece of furniture. The other piece was just a fun piece, to be honest with you. You have four of these in the Lichas, um, four different short inlays. I think Martin was right. The lavender maybe doesn't go, makes it look a little bit busy, but I just wanted something to show you this. And look how gorgeous it is. Look at the detail in it. It's fabulous. It really is. It's really nice. I've shabbied up the desk and it's been simply staged as well. So I'll get some nice uh, glamour shots of these things. So I've been Lel from Made by Marley. If you like furniture art, then please check out our own channel, Made by Marley. And uh, this video has been created for IOD. Hi, I'm Lel from Made by Marley and today I'm really just overwhelmed by the fact that I think I'm the first person in the UK to use the new IOD Petit Parasols. It's a very delicate print in grey and it's an inlay. Yeah? And this is the back. Really fabulous and decor, walls furniture and I'm going to show you on a piece of furniture. So what I've done is I've been quite bold. I've painted this bureau um, in a pink, it's a kind of peachy pink with some white, with burgundy, with white distress, with dark wax. I've done, sorry, dark um, shading. I've done all my groundwork for my um, transfer but because I've done all my groundwork and I don't want to then reapply, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, apply my um, inlays with varnish. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to just get set up this face in the piece and kind of work out which way I'm going to put these on and then we'll get to it. So if this, if this is the first time that you're applying the IOD um, paint inlays, then you normally apply them with paint. But because I've done my paint finish, I'm using varnish. But if you want to see how to apply them with paint, then there's plenty of tutorials out there and there's some in my in the Made by Marley um, YouTube channel if you want to see how. Um, so with all the inlays, I'm just going to show you on this one. There's a little paper edge. See this little edge that you have to cut off? So you have to always remember to do that if you're wanting to join them all together. So I've cut the edges off this one and it's going to take these two to do, um, to do this um, top piece. So I'm just kind of like, I'm going to just put that full one on there. And I'm not going to worry about this bit, this tiny bit here too much because I'm going to put the next part in lay here, here and here. I'm not going to do it in between the drawers. So I just need to, because there's a grid on the back, um, there's a grid in the back that helps you um, decide, you know, so we can see this here matches up here. This is the one that goes with this one because this here matches onto here. But there's a grid pattern. So if you just kind of like, just do this with your fingers so that you know where to cut. You, you can keep all these little parts. Now there's not actually much on that one, but I might want to fill some little bits in on the side. So I'm just going to do this just now and take them back off. And don't get them mixed up. That's the... A key part to this and just cut that down there like that. So let's just have a wee look at this again just so we know we're doing it right. This one's on here and we've got our little grassy bit matching down there. So this is how I'm going to apply them like this. So I'm going to sit these down in front of me and I'm going to get my varnish. Now a nice good liberal coat of varnish not too much that it's running everywhere 
but you know you need to have it you know reasonably thick not thin make sure you get right to your edges and I'm just going to go straight across here a little bit more I mean use plenty but you don't have it dripping off everywhere so I'm happy with that and we are going with this one first and this one second and yeah this is where it's important that this bit and this bit marry up there's nothing on this part up here that i have to concern myself with now now to get the wrinkles out you need a wet cloth and start smoothing out the wrinkles Some people use a, a, um, a lino roller or a brailer, but I think the wet cloth is the best way to go, get your wrinkles out, right down to your edges, and right up to there. Be careful not to push that piece apart as you get the wrinkles out of this edge. You can go down them as one, like that. And just work it. If your cloth starts to get a little bit dry, then you can make it damp again. Now, some people spritz them with water, but this is the way that I think works best for me. So, And you need to leave these till they're properly dry before you can remove them. Don't remove them before. Don't be tempted to peek too soon and remove them. Okay, so that's these ones on. There's a few wee wrinkles on there, but I'm not going to worry about it. Right to the corner edges here. Happy with that. Now, this drawer here. So we need to cut off our little squares, our little edges. It's just a tiny little edge, but let's cut it off. Obviously, if you've got a guillotine paper cutter, that would be easier. Now, this one came from over here, so this is going to be this part here, in here, and so we need to measure our squares, like this, yeah, and I'm just going to, and this hits just on this square here, so I'm just going to cut along this as well as I can. And I'm just going to sit this one so I don't get confused back where that goes. So let's just check we've got it the right way up. So this one here is going to go in here like this. And so we need the other part. And again, you just need to cut your edges off. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to match this drawer up and then we'll, we'll get, you know, we'll come back once I've done it. So I've cut out the um, the next pieces, and again, plenty of varnish so that it all sticks. And we're going with. I just used the little squares behind it. Just move that out in a minute, and this little chandelier goes here. There's nothing to match this bit up with here, so we're not 
don't need to worry too much about it and wet cloth and smooth out your wrinkles and push it down into the paint into the varnish so that it beds down in nice and normally you're pushing it down into paint and it's different but There we go. Just take your time when you're putting these on. Um, if we've got enough left, I might put a wee bit on the on the ends of here, but I might not. So, next part, we're going to go uh, further out for this one. Now, obviously, it doesn't all line up now. We're just doing our general sort of, you know. So, this one needs cut here. And we've already cut the edges off this one because it was the one from the last one. Um, so that goes there. And this. Uh, we're going to have to piece a piece in here because I cut it. That's not to worry though. So I'm going to add this bit first. And do that there. Put that down there. Cut it using the little grid back. And then I need to get this, grab this bit back to make sure that. Um, this was the piece that I cut off. And that's it there. So we'll put these two on first and we'll do the last bit at the end. Save me getting confused. If you're unsure, just go with what you've got just now. Obviously, I was thinking all the drawers were the same. Um, the same width, I wasn't thinking. Happens a lot. This one on here, like that. Oh, I didn't go all the way along with the varnish. And now we're going to try and match up our, our little part here. match up that bit does that's the part we want <laughs> Martin's <laughs> joking <laughs> are you okay there Martin? <laughs> I think he's choking at my debacle with the not cutting it right. There we go. And as per the the rest, um, wet cloth and smooth it down into the varnish. If you've got dribbles or runs with varnish that you can see anywhere catch them because you don't want those to be left on your piece once this is finished. Oops. 
there's nothing on this pot, but that's not the point. And for those that have never used inlays before, you'll know when they're ready to peel off because they'll go white again. And so that's when you, we can take them off, but we'll leave them on until they're completely dry. We want them completely dry and kind of wrinkle free. Now, last one. I've got options here. I can either go with this part here because now the drawer being shorter it, and it's all not having this part, it doesn't really matter too much, I don't think you know, as far as I'm concerned, what the next part is. We can either go with this part or we can cut a whole new part. Martin, what do you think? <laughs> I think we'll just put this, this new part on. I quite like this part here, I want to I want to have it in it and this bit. Let's just get its match. Is it this one or is it? It's this side. Yeah, is it? It's kind of tricky to find the match on this. No, it's this one. So this is the way we're going. And this is the way we're going to cut it. So. Um, now, I'm going to be really naughty and show you the wrong way, but I'm just going to ignore that little line that instead of cutting it off, I'm just pulling that over slightly, showing you all the bad things. It would really matter. You would have to take, cut it off. It would be really important if you were doing one big flat surface, but because I'm just now doing little sections, it's not, it's not. So that's important. And this is just ordinary varnish. It's not even furniture lacquer, it's varnish. And I tested this before um, and I've done it on another piece of furniture so I know that this, this works. Always do a wee test, <laughs> just in case. It was this part, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So we're nearly done um, with this. I have already put some on the sides, um, but um, I've kind of like, it's a bit sparse because I, I don't, I wanted to use all these bits in the front. So what I'm going to do with all these pieces and parts, these parts here, is I'm going to cut some just the general shapes out and kind of fill out the, fill out the sides a little bit more. That is my plan. And Martin will show you the sides if you want, Martin. You can show them what I've done so far. And I've kind of done that on both, but I didn't have much left to play with because I wanted to kind of like speed it up and do the sides first before I showed you the front. And I needed to keep all this for the front, so... This is where I've been a bit lazy. There you go. Okay. So as you can see, furniture inlays there, well, the, the inlays, they can go on anything really, but um, on furniture, it's, they're really easy to apply, really easy. Easy on paint, easy with varnish. Just, just if you're using a, a clear like coat or whatever, I would test it first. But paint, any chalk based um, style paint, and you'll get them to work. And they are, they are, they really are fabulous. They're, they're great, and they make your furniture just look absolutely amazing. And they have that hand painted when you rub your hand over them. You know, they have a real hand painted because you can feel the paint on them feel, which is is really nice. So I'm just going to cut up my little parts, my other little parts, and just finish my sides. And then we're going to let this dry and we'll come back to it later on. So it wasn't my intentions to um, do the top, but because I had some parts, pieces and parts left over, what I've done is I've just actually cut them out. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply with the varnish. Um, 
and we'll see how that looks if it doesn't look good I can paint over the top of it but I think it should I'm quite I quite like cutting up the inlays so I'm just going to apply them just how I've laid them out whoa that's a great big bit of varnish that just dribbled down there I'm just going to wipe that just in case it makes my inlay tricky to come off um, let's put that there so it's just the little pieces and parts so I'm just going to apply them all and then I'll just wipe them over wipe, wipe over with my cloth so the inlays are completely dry now and the way to remove inlays is a damp wet cloth the way you applied them and you just you can spritz it you can but I just I just do it the way I put them on but if you've got a spray mister you can um, you can do it that way now once I've got these removed I'm going to seal it but before I seal it I'm going to spray it with um, a matte spray um, lacquer because these are live and if you add a lot of varnish, wax, whatever, you'll start to smudge them. So just a word if, you, you know, if you're going to do that, just make sure you can half and half uh, a water-based sealer with some water and a little spray bottle and you can do it that way before you seal them. But So there we have it. And you keep your inlays because you can use them another couple of times, which is fabulous. So that's that one off. And I'll just wet this one. It's really the edges that get really, really crisp and dry that, you know, really stick. So. <laughs> so I'm not I'm on a bit of a rocky floor on my stable here so you have to watch these little paper bits here I haven't got my glasses on that might help I'll come back to that bit there we go fabulous I'm just going to remove the rest now Okay, so it's finished and those those beautiful inlays, the petite parasol, are absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to get Matt to have a close in in a minute. They're just so fine and so neat. It's just it's a beautiful piece of furniture. And all I did was I just did a sort of rough blend. I didn't, you know, spend, it wasn't my life's work. Then what I did was um, I just used varnish to apply the inlays, put the handles back, well, no, sealed it uh, with spray lacquer then sealed it again, put the handles back on and it's finished. And it actually, we did inside as well and we did the little petite parasols on the little drawer. This was the start colour of the blend. So I'll get Martin to give you a close up of it all. So this is it. And you saw how I applied it. It was going to be too... Not that I couldn't have done it in strips, but I just thought the paler area is where I had intended to put the inlays. But it's came out beautiful. It really is. It's so fine. Um, and it's on the sides. Oh, and also, I did the top, but because I didn't have full sections, I just cut it into sections and put it on the top just to give it that, that finished look. These are the little handles and it runs all the way down. So I hope you enjoy it. I mean, furniture, furniture inlays, I mean, whether you're applying them with paint, whether you're applying them with varnish, it's just, it's an amazing way to really, you know, give a piece of furniture a huge amount of lift. It, the detail in them is amazing. And they're so simple to use just, Apply it with either paint or, or your varnish, wet it, let it dry, wet it again and peel it off. And people will think you're amazing. Anyway, 
If you want to see more furniture art, um, hop over to Made by Marley, our channel. And this has been for IOD. Thanks for watching. Fabulous. So I really hope that you've really been inspired by these beautiful new inlays and techniques and the way to use them and, you know, pushing the envelope in how you can use and reimagine these products and how you can reimagine your furniture at home. Um, so if you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing to our channel here at Made by Marley. Uh, press the bell notification so that you're notified when Martin and I release a new video. Uh, if you like it, tell us why you liked it, what you liked about it. And if you're looking for something that you want to do at home on a piece of furniture and you're not quite sure whether it's about colour, whether it's about stamping, inlays, working on glass, whatever it is, just leave me a message in the comment below and I'll see what I can do in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.